not here flowers. Where is it? Oh, it's way down there. <laughs> biscuit. Let's get it. Adding to the hundreds of technical problems this morning, Tristan just had a wardrobe malfunction, so now he's got all his roses on him for Valentine's Day. So hello, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan, he's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And today we are celebrating Valentine's Day. It is an amazing time to be with your pet, um, especially if you don't have a person to celebrate Valentine's Day with. Many a hamster, gerbil, rabbit, guinea pig, cat, dog, horse, and other animals um, get to celebrate Valentine's Day with their humans. And I thought it might be interesting to look at some of the history of Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day uh, started with the ancient Romans, so it comes from a really long time ago. And Emperor Claudius II executed two people. Both were named Valentine on February 14th, but on different years. And that was in the 3rd century AD, so this is really ancient. And the martyrdom of these two guys was honored by the Catholic Church, with Valentine's Day. And Valentine's Day is a very old tradition. It, they think that it might have started with a Roman festival called Lupercalia, which was in the middle of February. And again, that was to start springtime. So many of our holidays and the timing um, of them come from pagan festivals honoring the changing of the seasons and times when people were much more closely tied to nature. And so we have a lot of these things that happen um, on the solstice and around that time of year, like with Christmas and Easter at springtime and Valentine's Day as well as a celebration of the spring. And as part of that Roman celebration, boys drew girls' names from a hat or a box, and that was their Valentine for the day. There were some associations with um, some really uh, terrible uh, dark, uh, bloodthirsty situations um, in Rome, and that's also part of Valentine's Day history. Um, one account from the 1400s describes Valentine as a temple priest who was beheaded near Rome by Emperor Claudius II the second for helping Christian couples get married. Sounds like it has a resonance in our modern times of, you know, um, justice of the peace and people trying to honor and marry all kinds of couples. Um, there's even a record actually lately of somebody trying to marry their horse or their dog. I can't remember. Um, another account claims that Valentine himself was the Bishop of Terni and was also martyred by Claudius II on the outskirts of Rome. So of course, in our modern times on Valentine's Day, which is February 14th, Many people exchange cards and gifts and flowers for their special Valentine. A little side note is that the shape of the heart that we use has nothing to do with the heart in the body. It doesn't look like that at all. And in fact, the shape of the heart was inspired by um, the bottom of a woman, the shape of a woman's hips from the rear view, like those bend over ladies in the yards that we used to have. So that's really where the um, heart shape comes from and that was also associated of course with your beloved and Valentine's Day um, and we have of course for years uh, shared chocolates with people that we love and some history even says that Valentine's Day was a pagan fertility ritual which is also associated with spring and that the Pope abolished this festival and decided that February 14th would be Saint Valentine's Day and so then it became a feast day in the Catholic calendar of saints. 
So then it has some kind of correlation also with Fat Tuesday and the idea of feasting before a time of um, deprivation um, leading up to Easter. Chaucer in the Middle Ages, we believe, was the first to link Valentine's Day with romantic love. And remember, romantic love is sort of a newer idea. It has not been around forever. Um, and many countries celebrate Valentine's Day. Denmark and France and Wales and China and England and the Philippines and Italy and many more. Um, so Valentine's Day is very important worldwide. And we always use this as a time to think about those who we love and to share gifts with them just to remind them that we love them. And of course, Valentine's Day is associated with Cupid and roses and doves and birds that meet for life to remind us of the enduring qualities of love, love knots in the uh, Celtic tradition. And then of course, Valentine's Day lace is also important. And there was just actually something on TV the other day for all of us corgi lovers in the world that in Wales, um, they have spoons that are carved intricately to commemorate marriage and are often given on anniversaries as well as Valentine's Day. And the handles of these spoons are really intricately carved. And some of them even have like a box carved into them that you can see in. And the numbers of spheres in there indicate the number of children that that couple getting married is expected to have. And these spoons are so intricately carved, the handles are very like different kinds of Celtic knots. And part of what the symbol of the knot is, again, is that two destinies intertwined into one, which we can even see in the clutter ring, which has two hands interlaced holding a heart. Um, again, that idea of romantic love and enduring love. So Valentine's Day is a very important part of many people's lives in America. You can't really escape it. Every aisle in the supermarket, the drugstore, the Walmart, full of cards and gifts for Valentine's Day. Americans spent $19.7 million on Valentine's Day in 216. Um, and the average spend per person is about $150. Those are some pretty nice presents. I don't think I've gotten too many Valentine's presents worth that much. <laughs> um, and in 2010, people only spent $103. Really, those flowers and boxes of candy are getting much more expensive. And there are also beautiful examples of Victorian Valentines. A lot of people collect these. They are so beautifully colored and um, so delicate and finished with lace and things. They are really wonderful. Um, the oldest known Valentine today that we know about is a poem written by Charles Duke of Orleans to his wife. And he wrote that while he was a prisoner in the Tower of London. And that was a beautiful love note. And of course, we can celebrate Valentine's Day reading poetry. There is a wonderful book by Mary Oliver called Dog Songs. There are just poems about dogs if you want to celebrate with your dog and read a poem um, to commemorate your emotional feelings for your dog. Dog Songs is a wonderful place to look. And roses are, of course, the number one flower sold over Valentine's Day and heart-shaped candles are sold and boxes of heart-shaped um, chocolates. And of course, everyone with a corgi loves the, and actually all dog people love the heart-shaped boxes from Russell Stover that have pictures of dogs on them. I have several with corgis, tricolor and orange. <laughs> and many a corgi person collects these boxes. And I think that the corgi boxes are going to become scarce because they seem to be shifting to different breeds. I've seen, uh, actually brought my sister one with a cavalier on it last year. So Valentine's Day also reminds us about Tellington Tea Touch heart hugs. And we'll just do one together. I'm wearing a heart necklace today, which actually has an interesting history. I ordered something from a catalog around this time of year, some clothing, and as a gift to me from the company, and I'm sure they did this for everyone, they sent these beautiful red crystal heart necklaces out to people that had spent a certain amount of money at that time of year, many years ago. 
And as a person who doesn't wear much in the red colors, I never had a heart necklace like this. I've had some silver ones that my grandmothers have given me little lockets. So I was pretty pleased to get this, especially since it was a gift. So to do a Tellington Tea Touch heart hug, just cross your hands over your heart, make that connection to your skin, through your clothes, and you're just gonna make that circle and a quarter. Starting with the six towards your feet, you're going around the circle all the way back, that clock face to the six and up to the nine. And as you do this, it's nice to close your eyes and take a deep breath and think about something you love. And if you're celebrating Valentine's with your pet, as you close your eyes and think about what you love, let that be something about your pet or your horse that you love. Biscuits. <laughs> And you can also do this on your dog or your cat or your horse. Just put your hand over their chest and you can do this somewhere else on their body if your animal is, for instance, a low riding dachshund and you can't really fit your hand there unless he's on your lap. But you can still put your hand on your animal's chest or on his body and make that circle and a quarter. Nice and slow, going from the six on the clock up and around the clock and back around to the six to the nine and just take a moment and do that and send appreciation to the animal in your life because animals really like valentine's day connect us to the seasons connect us to nature connect us to spirituality and ourselves animals provide so much love for people in the world and they do it without question they are just um so considerate of us and we are not as a species really very nice to the animals in the world so let's let valentine's day be a time this year to take time and send love to the animals in the world to the animals in your life and to the many animals that have crossed your path in the past and that will come into your life to come tristan tristan and i are going to celebrate today by a trip to the dentist <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says Valentine's Day like getting your teeth cleaned. And then we have a new client this afternoon who has got some really interesting things going on. We're going to do a conversation with a corgi about that dog uh, tomorrow or the next day. Um, so thanks for joining us today. Everybody have a great day. Danny, it's so funny. I was looking at the map this morning. South Dakota is only a tiny bit more north than my part of Massachusetts. Interesting, and yet I perceive your area as super cold. And I know you still have tons of snow on the ground. And in my area, the snow has melted everywhere except on this end of my road. We still have a good, I don't know, eight inches around most of the areas that don't get full sun all day long or that are not covered by trees to make the snowfall skimpier in the first place. But we have some patches where the corgis can walk, and that's what matters to us. So thanks for joining us today. Everybody have a great day. We'll be back tomorrow for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. I think Brian's coming tomorrow to upload the new ones to YouTube. in South Dakota. That's warmer than here, Danny. <laughs> Tomorrow it's warmer here. <laughs>